like at this time of the year, it probably helps, right? I feel lighter, period. I mean, with the haircut, my body feel good. Uh, been doing really great with my diet and everything, so I feel fast, feel great, excited to be out here with the guys. How important is that as you get on in your career to, you know, do the stuff you need to do in the offseason in terms of diet and training, get your sleep and all that? Yeah, I just feel like I wouldn't necessarily say as the older I get, I just I feel like the more wisdom I have now, I just know, you know, you got to eat right, try to eat right year round. Uh, my whole entire family tries to eat right now. I got kids too, so we try to feed them as good as possible. Uh, but just like I said, taking care of your body, doing all the rehab stuff, not just in the building, but outside the building as well. I'm always trying to take care of my body year round. Uh, that's just my mentality, I always staying in it. Uh, not pretty much letting my mind get too far off away from ball. I'm always locked in on ball. Even if I'm not in the building, watch a film, I'm taking care of my body, doing all the little things. Can you you mentioned the diet. No, nah, you're good. I, I know I know what you meant. I just wanted to put that out there. You mentioned the diet. Are there significant changes that, that you've made? Because you kind of you look more lean than Yeah, you. I mean, trust me. It's funny. I was, um, you know, sometimes you get on your iPhone on the picture. Sometimes they get, like, flashback or throwback pictures or whatever. I seen an old picture of me in 2017 taking a picture after a game with my dad, and I just felt like I had a gut in there. And I wasn't, I don't feel like I was heavy or nothing like that, but I was just like, my body looks so much different now. And I think a lot of that contributes to uh, just having a better diet, eating more clean, not eating a whole lot of fast food, just like you said, just staying, staying in tune with my body all the time. And uh, I feel like it helps on the field as well, for sure. So there's still meat in your diet? like you have Yeah, and no, I still eat meat, but uh, not a lot of red meat, you know, every now and again. If me and my wife go to dinner, we might get a steak or whatever, but mainly fish. Chicken sometimes, a lot of vegetables, not a lot of carbs at night. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of doing like an intermittent fasting type deal where I don't really eat food until like 11 o'clock. And uh, last meal of the day at least stops at like 7, 7.30. Uh, in the morning time, I'm eating like berries and stuff like that. I don't know. It just keeps me light. Uh, and honestly, it helps me recover more overnight. Uh, just a lot of different benefits and stuff like that. Your own business to take care of, but how much do you communicate with the guys on the other side? Is I'm kind of referring to trailing a rookie kind of coming in the league. Do you give them pointers? Do you try to talk them through some things? What what's things like with them? Yeah, I mean, being my first day back out here doing OTAs, practicing, actually getting to working with those guys, uh, haven't had a lot of communication with them just yet. But I think as the days go along, and you know, as he's running routes and things like that, I may give him some pointers. Hey. If you do this a little bit, you might be able to get get the DB to bite or get open. Uh, same thing with Malik. Uh, any type of knowledge that I have, I'm going to try to share with the guys. Same thing, especially with some of the younger DBs, just trying to make sure we're all communicating because at the end of the day, uh, we're all working towards one goal. What are your Roger, impressions of Traylon so far, Coach? Uh, like I said, I mean, I've only been out here one day, but, I mean, he's big. Uh, looks like a big target. Uh, excited to see, you know, how, how the offense is going to use him in different ways. I know he's going to be – you know, a deep threat guy. He's going to be working underneath, working over the middle. Uh, so just excited to see a guy like him step into that role of, you know, I wouldn't say necessarily being number one receiver right now, but I, he's definitely, I feel like he's going to have to earn it. Um, but I, like I said, I'm excited to see him. Excited for all the rookies, man. And more importantly, I'm more excited about some of the younger guys that we have on defense, Roger, uh, Theo, and those guys. Uh, continue to see those guys improve and get better. Roger no. mentioned you as an influence to him early on, just having you in the building and the mentorship that you've had on him. <laughs> What have you really been preaching to him, and what have you seen from him in these in these days? Well, first, I think it's just important for those guys to see me in meetings, uh, doing little things. Like, I think for young guys, it's always good to see a veteran out there with his notebook out, uh, taking down notes and things like that, so they can kind of see from an older guy who guy who's been doing it for a while, uh, see how he does it every single day, uh, taking care of my body, doing things like that. But just on the field, uh, especially for young guys, man, this defense is really complex. Uh, so I'm always trying to communicate with those guys, trying to preach to them little pointers and stuff like that because, you know, during OTAs, it's a lot of installs. So for some of these guys who's just coming in, maybe only been for a week or two, uh, as we put in more defense, the heads get to spin a little bit. So I'm always trying to give them pointers that say, hey, calm down. They should communicate and get this call out, do this, do that. And uh, like you said, they're going to continue to get better and better and better. In trying to get this defense to take another step, how much of it is uh, trying to individually improve, set some goals, and, and how good might this defense, or do you all hope at least, could be this season? Yeah, well, especially during OTAs, man, it's always about you know individual improvement for sure. Uh, for me, myself, personally, I'm always trying to get better every single day. Uh, being my first day back out here, have some things I got to work on, and I'll make sure I come back out here on Friday, which I think, uh, have a better day. So it's all about steady improvement and just letting the guys know, like, hey, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, no day is going to be perfect. No play is going to be perfect. But make sure we're out here trying to finish, showing great effort, those type of things we can't, uh, can't coach. But obviously, you know, once we get all the everybody in here, all the vets in here, uh, it's definitely about just preaching, man, making sure that we're having that, I won't say continuity, but just that cohesiveness uh, with all the guys, whether it's the rush, the pass rush, um, 
and the DBs on the back end. So we're just trying to get better, and guys are still learning. So that's what OTAs, in my opinion, is more about. It's more about learning, learning the scheme, and as we continue to learn and get better with that, uh, I think the full picture of what the defense will look like. We're not, I'm not going to necessarily put any uh, great expectations, even though I said that you know we're trying to be the number one defense. Uh, but as of right now, it's mainly just about learning, trying to make sure we're getting everybody together to learn the scheme. As a guy who's been in this system for several years now, what can a guy like you still learn in this, in, as part of this OTA process? Everything. Uh, me personally, I'm a guy. I like to have reps. I like to get in reps. Uh, it's not necessarily about feeling like I, I'm getting behind or nothing like that. But I want to be out here. I love playing ball. I want to be out here playing ball with the guys. Uh, and then, like you said, just the mentorship of the younger guys, seeing the vet out here uh, working hard, busting his behind. And uh, I'm still learning. I mean, I don't think there's ever going to be a time as I'm playing this league that I'm not going to learn uh, getting better, uh, doing little small things, adding little things to my game, trying to play the little game with Ryan Tannehill and things like that. So uh, I'm always trying to learn, always trying to get better. In terms about of your, your dot and conditioning and all that, is your weight different now than what it was when you first came in the league? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think when I first came in the league, man, I was probably like 215 or something like that. Uh, I'm not that much smaller. I'm probably like 211, 210. But it's just, it's a way different 210, 211. Uh, like I said, I definitely feel more slim. I feel faster. And obviously playing last year, playing at a high level, I kind of felt that difference between uh, if I have a great week on my diet, I'm eating right, I feel great during the game, I feel light, I feel fast. And that's how I want to feel 24-7. And being a younger player, you don't really understand that because uh, you kind of just – just getting introduced to these type of things. So as I'm getting older, I definitely feel being lighter, being faster, that's the name of the game. The particular ball skills, Kevin, the, the two rookies, McCreary and, and Theo, what do, you, what do you like about what you've seen? Uh, like I said, I see them out there competing, playing hard. Uh, I know it was a play out there. Uh, we had man-to-man. -man, uh, Hooper made, ran a great route on Theo. It's just trying to explain to him different, different tendencies between uh, different tight ends. I know Hooper has a lot of great route craft. He's a guy who was, you know, in Atlanta, in Cleveland, really good safety valve, finding holes in the zone, but then also having good route craft at the top of his routes. Just trying to explain to him, hey, he might give you head fake, different things like that. Just stay patient. Uh, know where your leverage is, know where your help is, and things like that. So these guys need those type of plays, need those reps so they can understand how to get better and be better next time. Who cooks at your house? Are you or Clark? Who, who's usually fixing a meal? No, I have a chef, uh, Chef Cleveland. Uh, he's not like, I don't have him at my house 24-7, nothing like that. But he usually come early in the week, cook all the meals, and he kind of labels everything. So uh, during the season, I'm really mainly only dinner time because I'm in the facility for so long. But during times like this, you know, he cooks lunch, dinner, and all those things, like I said, for the entire family. So uh, just trying to eat better. And then when you know better, you do better. If you're cheating, what are you eating? <laughs> Psh, man. I, the thing about me, man, I'm a big snack guy, especially at night. I think that's the biggest thing for me why I try to cut my meals off at 7, 7.30, which is hard sometimes, especially if – during the offseason, stay up a little bit later. You don't got to get up early in the morning. It's real easy to go out there and then grab some cookies, some ice cream or something like that. Uh, so I think if I can st keep steady with, like you said, cutting my meals off at 730, you know, I wake up in the morning pretty hungry. Uh, that's what I want. Kevin, I know you're a team guy, but last year how gratifying was it for you, given how you guys struggled the previous year, and we talked about communication issues, to come back to have the defense play so well and you individually to get back to your all pro status. Yeah, man, I, I honestly truly believe that when the defense plays better, obviously you have to have individual players playing well. Uh, but when we have the defense play how we play it, playing together, uh, guys are going to have great stats. And I was one of those guys that had a great year. Like I said, I talk about the preparation, my diet, and all those things with watching film. Uh, I was really great last year. Um, but like I said, I really felt like even in 2020, the defense not having a great year, nobody really had a great year that year. And like I said, vice versa. So. Um, I think it's all about team balls, all about playing together because, you know, on third downs, if the pass rush isn't good, the quarterback has a lot of time, it's hard to cover for five, seven seconds or whatever it may be. But when the pass rush is working well, on the back end, we can kind of play a little bit more aggressive knowing that the quarterback has to get the ball out. So it's all about playing together. So that's why I'm constantly always preaching to the guys is that, hey, we have to be playing together. It all has to come together. It's not just about the back end playing well or the front, front seven playing well. It has to be all together because as a defense, when we're all playing well, you know, guys get paid and guys have great stats. So uh, that's definitely going to be the plan this year.